Hey, Flow friends. So winter 20 is almost here. It's going to start rolling out September 20th, but most people are going to get it October 12th, 2019. There's a lot of changes coming to Flow, and I'm not going to go through every single one of them, but I want to go through some of the features that I find very interesting. Of course, you're going to want to check out the release notes for more information or just play around with it in a winter 20 horde. All right, the first thing I want to take a look at is scheduling auto launch flows. So these are flows that don't have any screens. I'm pretty excited about this because it's going to mean that we can now have flows run without having to call it through Apex, have a user click a button, or use Process Builder. The way that you set up a schedule is you double click the start icon. And then you were going to be presented with two options. And the first one is the standard one, which is non users or apps launch the flow. The other one is schedule. And when we select this, we have a whole bunch of options. We can start the start date, uh, start time. We can select the frequency. And then there's this item for run based on a set of records. So in this circumstance, we can go through and say, you know what? I want you to go ahead and get all the accounts that meet certain criteria. And then for each account that gets returned, it's going to go ahead and run the rest of the flow. What I'm not quite sure is how the limits are applied to this. So there's that 2000 element limit. We also have the CPU time and a few other things that could come into play here, depending upon how this is processed. If each account is considered its own transaction, it's going to be a lot simpler from a limit standpoint than if every account that comes back from this query counts as one set of transactions, because that means the number of elements you could have within this flow is going to depend upon the potential size of the number of accounts that come out. Um, I'm going to be playing around with this. I'll be interested to see how it works. All right, other things. So one of the ones that I really like is the fact that when you create a resource now, it's going to auto populate. So this is something that the Cloudflow designer, the old flow builder used to do and got missed in the most recent update of the Lightning Flow Builder until now. So I'm going to go ahead and open one of my screens and you can see I have this uh, choice option. I got these radio buttons with option one and option two. If I go ahead and add a new choice, and I say, I'm going to create a new resource and we'll just call this option three and go ahead and finish cop doing all the exciting copy and pasting to go ahead and get this set up into the system. You can see it automatically populates through that doesn't always happen uh, in the previous version. And you would have to then click it back into the box to select the choice, which is crazy. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. It's going to make running flows a little bit faster. Now, the big thing, the really big thing is conditional visibility. So I have a display checks here and you can see it says, hey, you have chosen option one. And underneath here, we have set component visibility. So now I can go through and say, I only want this component to display if they select option one from the screen above. So let's take a look how that looks. I'm going to go ahead and save this quick. I'm going to get some issues. Don't worry about it. And I'm going to run this in the debugger. So I'm going to go click the debug and just set run. And you can see we have our radio button. And if I select two or three, nothing happens. But if I select option one, boom, there's that display text that I just saw. That is really cool. That means we can do a lot of really complicated logic in our screens that beforehand we would have to ask the user the question, have a decision element, and then have screens based upon what the user answered. Now we can do it all in one screen, which is going to make things a lot simpler and a much friendlier user experience. All right, next is the concept of having a lookup component. I don't know about you folks, but this is something that's been missing from Flow for a long time. So if you wanted to have your users tell you, hey, what record do you want? You would have to do something like query all the potential records, create a record set uh, choice list, give them a list of all the options, have them choose it. It's kind of crummy and it really limits you to what you can do. Or you would have to do something like, here, collect the different pieces of information that you can use in a get records to try to find the record that they actually mean. Well, guess what? 
uh, Winter 20 comes with a lookup component. It is a lightning component, so you do need to be using things like lightning runtime and stuff like that. If you're running a lightning experience, no problems. If you're still in classic and you want to use this, you do need to make sure you have lightning runtime enabled in your process automation settings. So we'll take a look at how this is set up. So we, I basically already have this built. We have the lightning uh, component indicated by this little lightning thing for lookup dragged onto here. And if we take a look at how this is built, it's a little complicated. Uh, the first is you need to have the name of the lookup field. So this has to reference a real lookup field within your org. So if you don't have a lookup field to a custom object anywhere in your system, you can't create a lookup field for here. So in this example, I'm using a count ID from the contact. Uh, count ID here, this field API name, it's case sensitive. I found this out by accident. So I had a capital D for ID and it didn't work. Uh, so I ended up copying and pasting it from the object manager directly into the field API name and it magically worked. So that needs to be exact. The label, however, could be whatever we want. We can call it account, we can call it vendor, we can call it whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It doesn't even have to match the label of the field you're referencing. Then we have to have the object that has the lookup field. So in this case, I'm using the contact because we all have contacts in Salesforce. So we all have the account ID field, but I could also use a custom object. So this could be my custom object underscore underscore C, and I could reference a different field name at the above. And if, of course, it's a custom object, we have the underscore underscore C there. Record ID. Um, I kind of find this interesting. It basically lets you default a value. I'm using a hard-coded record ID. I don't recommend doing that in an actual full, but for demonstration purposes, it's simpler. If you needed to have an actual default, I would recommend doing a get record to grab the ID of the value versus hard-coding it here because hard-coding, not good. Uh, and then I, you have the option to say, hey, do you want to make it required or not? Meaning the lookup field on the flow. So let's take a look at the other screen. This is here just to show you what happens from the lookup component. Uh, what I did is it's just as a display output text. And then for this, uh, I simply selected it from the resource window. So here's our lookup under screen components. And then we have variables that we can select from here. So let's go ahead. I'm going to save this and we'll put this in the debugger again so you can take a look at it. So I hit debug and we hit run. There's our lookup account. Now, it, there was a weird delay. I And sometimes it happens quickly. Sometimes it takes a couple seconds. I haven't quite figured out why it took so long to fill in that particular account name. Uh, but that's our default uh, account based on the idea we specified in the component. I can X out of this and it works just like any other lookup component. I can select a recent account. I can go ahead and uh, type it in and do a search, whatever. It works like a lookup field. So now that I have that selected, I click next. Here's my output. There's the ID. So if I look, that would be the ID of the account that I just selected. Other things that have changed. Uh, you may have recently watched the video that I did on resources. One of the types of resources that you can create is called a text template. Text templates are really great for doing a combination of messages. So if you had a whole bunch of different variables, maybe a whole bunch of different fields from different records, and you wanted to create a message used for like an email or a chatter post or a notification, something like that, or maybe even just display it on the screen, text templates are really good for that. Um, the big change here is that text templates now are rich text. So they used to be rich text way back in the Cloud Designer, and but it was kind of funky and they had issues. When Lightning Flow Builder came out, there was no rich text. Now there's rich text. I have seen some people report that if they had been using HTML in their rich text template before Winter 20, that the update has done some funky things with it. So if you have been using text templates with HTML in here, I would recommend you check those flows out in your sandbox with the Winter 20 preview on uh, before the release comes out so you make sure nothing funky is happening. All right, the last thing we'll take a look at is panning and multi-select. So you may recall that you used to have to hit the, the space bar and you would switch between select and panning. Uh, that's not an option. Uh, problem anymore. You could either use your left mouse button or you can hold down the middle button 
accomplishes the same feat. And then down in the bottom right, we have this new icon. So this used to be just select, but now we can go ahead and select multiple elements at one time and move them all around. We could have done that in the previous version, but it required you to hold the shift key to select multiple elements. And click and, click and drag is just so much easier. Okay, the last feature we're gonna take a look at, I have mixed feelings about, and that is your record variables will automatically be created. So you do not need to create an S object or a record variable or a record variable collection now when you do a get records. Let's take a look at that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a get records to the canvas and we'll give it a name, get random accounts, and we'll select our object, which will be account. And we'll just put some funky variables in here. It's three greater than, get all records. All right, so right down at the bottom, there's this checkbox called manually assigned variables. If you check this box, it's gonna give us the normal way that we can create our record variables. So if you wanna still name your own variables, you can still do that. Uh, but if we remove this checkbox, we'll get this little error message saying that if you've already created the one, they're gonna get deleted and yada, yada, yada. But if we go ahead and not click that box and we click done, what you'll find in the resource manager tab is that we have a record collection variable that created for us. And that is based off of the type of object that you're querying and the name of the element, the get records element. So in this case, it's accounts from get underscore random underscore accounts. Very, very long. It's very clear what it is. I'm, I, I'm, I really don't know what I think about this particular feature. On one hand, I think this makes it a lot easier to get great records to quickly create these elements and use them. But on the other hand, I've been such a stickler to keeping to a naming convention. I, I really like having my variables start with the letters VR so I can quickly use type ahead to select and find the right one that I want to do. But at least I have the option. I can choose to create my own or I can go this auto creation route and time will tell what I stick with. So that's a quick overview of some of the features coming out in Winter 20 for Flow. I highly recommend you take a look at the release notes because there's a few other things left in there. The other place you can take a look is unofficialsf.com. So this is created by Salesforce employees, but it's considered unofficial. There's test code here. There's some other things. I got a blog post that talks more about it, but one of the posts that they have here uh, is an overview of all the different things that are coming out for Flow in the Winter 20. So definitely check out this post and definitely check out the release notes. There's a lot of exciting things coming. And I wanna hear from you. Tell me, what are you looking forward to the most? Uh, add it in the comments. Thanks. Hey, thanks for watching. If you wanna get a cool shirt like this, you can go to thewizardnews.com slash shop and you'll find shirts like this as well as stickers, coffee mugs, notepads, and even pillows. You can also support us by shopping through our Amazon affiliate link, which you'll find in the description as well as to the wizardnews.com under the support me menu. To get more videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button and then click on the bell icon to get the notifications of all the future videos. Remember, the magic is out there. It's yours for the taking.